this is John Black, Super Journalist. Uh, this is just a disclaimer to let you know that uh, this video is not intended to be imitated, uh, no parts of it. Uh, it should not be copied or done by you or anybody. It's just for educational and maybe entertainment purposes to watch. That's it. I don't condone anyone repeating anything in the video. Keep in mind, this is the most unsafe thing you could do. I mean, this is borderline idiotic. If that tin can leaks at all, the putty I used only goes up to 230 Fahrenheit. I'm getting temperatures of like 600 Celsius, you know, instead of 110 Celsius. So I could get a leak where I got my thing, but I'm basically using my tin can steel. Okay, this is what I got. I used spoons, and knives, and stuff like that. So I can get a look at that code. PS polystyrene and the number six. It's always with the, those, those arrows around it. See there? You can see, first of all, I cut them up into small pieces. See that? Turn. You can see over here, I got it taped up and goes into that jar. I did do a uh, blast shield um, with cinder block all around it. The back has wood, but it's real thick wood. It doesn't catch on fire easy. And uh, there's cinder block behind it to, to hold it, you know what I mean, weight it down. Uh, I got a heavy, this board on top here, I swear to God, it weighs like 50 pounds. Uh, or at least 40 and uh, so everything's pretty contained. I was going to put plexiglass in the front, but I'm just going to let it go because there's nothing really there except the camera. So basically I have 104 grams of uh, polystyrene, uh, 104 grams of styrene as a mole, so that's like a mole in there. Probably going to get a lot of polymers coming over with it because I'm heating it so high. I guess I should call those oligomers instead of polymers. Oligomers, I think, are up to nine or ten uh, monomers in the oligomer. <clears throat> Once you get above ten, I think it's then it's called a polymer. You know, dimer, trimer, oligomer, and then polymer. I got my water cool condenser. Um, and I'm going to put bags of ice over top of that, too. This should only take like 5-10 minutes. I mean, it should be quick. I hope, because I, I want to get it over with. It's scaring the heck out of me. Keep in mind, any one of these seams, too. See how they got seams going around at the top and the bottom? Those could leak at any second. This is a tin can, for God's sakes. It's thinner than paper. You got this cap. It's garbage. I could probably rip that off with my hand. Leaks anywhere are not going to be good. Now I want you to pay attention. Here's the propane and here's the uh, can. Look at this red line here. And I drew it bigger here so you can see it better. 
that is where the hold happens and it's right on uh, it's not on the seams it's right in the middle of the can a crack about maybe that maybe about an inch three quarters of an inch long a hairline crack and you'll see look on the video and you'll see at this spot you'll see uh, you know fumes coming off that's from the styrene leaking out now if that hits the flame I don't even know what would happen might go inside the container I, I, I don't know what the deal is Uh, so this time I got the same setup. The uh, diameter of the tubing is bigger this time. Last time it was like the size of my finger. Uh, I used smaller diameter tubing because it was kinking up before. And plus I had two different sizes. This time I got, look how nice and uniform it is. Um, now at the end here, I got a brand new can. Now this still has seams. This is still not the correct way to do this. This is a terrible way to do this. I don't suggest anyone do this. <coughs> but you can see it has the thing that comes out. It's not, I'm gonna I got a cap here. I'm gonna epoxy that. And then when I, you'll see on the end of this, this is one piece here. <clears throat> it goes, it's a reducer. It goes from, there's no, no threads or anything. It goes from here to here. And then I got a clamp on there. And then I'm going to epoxy it right here. And then I got this, like I said. Let me tell you, I didn't like hammer this in. This is nice and snug, this fitting here. And I'm going to epoxy that around here. Last time I did it with a rating of, what was it, 230 Fahrenheit. This time it's, uh, I think, 550 Fahrenheit, uh, which is good for the boiling point. Like, I think the boiling point is uh, 145 set Celsius, though. So that would be about 300 uh, Fahrenheit. And this goes up to 550, so it'd be definitely good enough uh, as long as this doesn't get that hot. Okay, there's my setup. I got my teapot. Goes up there. Over to there. Ice bath. <laughs> All right, I had this whole thing set up, and it, I had it in a wet place in a basement, you know, so it was all nice and contained or whatever. And uh, I thought at first, you can see I left that little footage in there, that the, I thought the styrene had gotten out and messed up the camera. So I just stopped it and kept, I already started, I had to keep going, you know what I mean? Later on, I found out it was just the moisture in the camera. It had nothing to do with the styrene. So I was like, I, I just started. I literally just started. And it, you know, I looked over at and I noticed on the screen it was all foggy like that. And I was like, what the heck happened, man? But it had just been moisture that had gotten in there. I didn't see the first couple of seconds, so I thought it happened, out, you know, after I started. Uh, anyways, I did it for a while. You'll see how much I got. I, got, I actually got, like, probably... It was a lot lighter when I first did it. It was still milky but not that dark brown uh but i went outside and this stuff stunk because i had uh you know an exhaust air and uh it just stunk and the, you know the further away you got the different it smelled first it's if you get real close it smelled like uh bur you know you're burning uh plastic you know a styrene cup but as you got further away like 10 feet away then it smelled more like a, a, a chemical that you just didn't know what it was and then maybe 20 30 feet away it smelled more like uh, ammonia type you know what I mean 
and uh, I know if I was walking by or driving by or whatever, because this thing was dragging, man. I mean, it, I, don't, I don't know how far it went, but I shut it down, and uh, I had to vacuum distill this and I couldn't vacuum distill because that sucks the thing out and it would just be this stuff really carries man if I smelled this I would the first thing I would think is I think someone's you know probably making meth or something because it's such an unusual smell you know what I mean that you don't or someone might think it's a gas leak I just can't afford you know that you know if you're automatically a, a criminal in my country you know what I mean if you want to study any kind of science or anything um, and you can't afford a college, then you're automatically guilty. So I, I don't want any of that. I'm not doing nothing illegal, and I don't want no cops at my house or nothing. Um, so I could have distilled it. They do have, uh, I think, like resorcinol or whatever it's called, where you have the benzene ring with a phenyl group on it. <clears throat> you have one or two phenyl groups on there. They use that as an inhibitor. And you can distill it because I think at 100 degrees Celsius or something like that, uh, that's like the point. You you want to be below that. You don't want to be at that point because that's when it starts polymerizing. You know what I mean? And so you have to be below that. That's for sure. Maybe 65 at the tops. Um, but they do have these inhibitors that inhibit the polymerization. One of them, the first one was sulfur, and I have sulfur. Uh, but for one, it isn't uh, purified enough, and I don't know enough about plastics to be distilling something over that temperature where it starts polymerizing more. You know what I mean? That's not for me. Uh, this is real. I mean, if I knew about plastics, it might be a different story. Uh, this is the styrene. It wasn't that dark when I first did it. It's been sitting there for a couple of days. It's polymerized even more than it was. Half of it, though, was already polymerized. All right, so I, I just want to get rid of this crap. I ran out of time, but if I was to do this next year or another time, this is the way I would do it. You can see the top graph is the where I'm depolymerizing. I would have a suck back trap. I'd put something in here, you know, to uh, bubble it out, filter it out. Another suck back, another bubbler. This way I could get, you know, there wouldn't be any smell getting out. Let's say when I was, this is the pump for vacuum distillation. I'd maybe get some dry ice and methanol and see this is the hose coming out right and I have it set as like a u-trap I put the dry ice in this container and you know chill this tube down like you know with methanol or acetone and dry ice and uh, hopefully it would liquefy whatever I don't know though but I'm just saying these are guesses or these are what I would do or what I'm thinking maybe put this after the pump maybe put this as all you know and then after the pump I would go to a suck pack a bubbler you know this would go out here, let me put this, you know, I'd take this and connect it into there. That way I got my vacuum and I also got the gases, nothing can escape. And some kind of combination of these couple ideas here is what I would do. So here's my vacuum pump. And you can see this is the outtake, right? This would be the intake. I'd connect this up to my apparatus. It would shoot out stuff here. See how it has like a little... Iron circle. You could easily put a tube on there. That way, when you did this, this, that's how you get your tube. You take it up to your bubblers, or take it to the dry ice, uh, you know, the, uh, the cold finger or whatever. Um, just suggestions of what I might do. Always remember, science is great.